All right, so in this video, we're going to be looking at how to create addition and multiplication tables in other bases besides base 10. Um, these exercises are sometimes very important for teachers who are learning to teach kids how to create addition and multiplication tables in standard base 10. Um, the reason for it is because if you're, you eventually want to memorize these tables, but to understand sort of the process of how kids have to think about this, it's useful for teachers to think about it in other bases. Um, and it's it's a it's I find that it's a really interesting exercise in sort of uh, we take so many things for assumption for granted once we learn how to do this and uh, trying to struggle with like how do you build an addition table or a multiplication table? Uh, so that it's going to be accurately representing your uh, process um, in a base other than base 10. It's kind of daunting a little bit. So uh, this is um, an exercise that I find extremely useful, not only for the teachers to help the kids, but then also just as a sort of mental math uh, challenge. So I'm going to start with uh, examples. We're going to do base four. Uh, because it's a nice small one. And then we're going to also do base 12. So let's start with an addition table for base four. Now, if I do an addition table for base four, I'm going to need one column for my numbers, and I'm going to need one column for the other numbers going across the top. Um, so I'm going to need at least five columns because I'll have four numbers one two three four right or i'll do one two three and then ten right so and then we'll do five by five so again think about um zero zero we don't worry about um we're gonna do one two three and then remember in base four four is represented by 10 because it's one copy of four and zero copies of one. And then going down, we'll do the same thing. One, two, three, and then 10 is four. Now, one way you can fill these out is literally to just treat these like they're numbers in base 10, do the multiplication, and then uh, to create the table, we want to just figure out what that representation is in base four. Now, uh, for adding, particularly for small numbers, this isn't going to be too bad, and you're going to readily start to see the pattern. So one plus one is just two. And then uh, one plus two is going to be three. But then one plus three is four, but we don't have four. We have one, four, and zero ones. And then the next column over, one and four, remember that's what one zero is, is five, but how do we represent that? That's as a one, four, and one, one gets me 11 in base four. Okay, two and one, that gets me a three. But now in the next case, I get two and two is four, but that's one zero in base four. And then two and three is five, but that's one one in base four. And then two and four is six, but in base four, that's one four and two ones. So that's one two in base four. And so you can kind of see what's happening here. Three and one is four, but that's one zero in base four. This is one more than that, which is one one, one two, and then one three. And so four and one is five, which is one, one in base four, and then one, two in base four, 
and one, three in base four. And four times four is 16, but that is 10 times 10, which is wrong button. Uh, 10 times 10 is 100 base four. Because what does that mean? Zero ones, zero fours, and one four squared, because four times four is four squared. So we've now gone up the next digit. So uh, and we're not adding, right? Actually, sorry, we're not adding. We're We're not multiplying, we're adding. 10 plus 10 is 20. Sorry, I got lost there for a second. 10 plus 10, we're adding. 10 plus 10 is 20. All right. Uh, it's kind of tricky. Now, we can fill out a similar table for multiplication in base 4. So we would need a table of basically the same size. Five by five. And now we're going to have the same numbers on the top row and the same numbers in this column. And then we have to remember that we're multiplying. And see how hard it is, but we're multiplying. So one times one, that's still one. So that's fine. One times two, we're multiplying. Um, let's uh, just to make clear what's inside the table and what is outside the table. So what are our values and what are our actual computations. So one times one, that's still one. One times two, that's still two. So this first row is just going to be the same because it's all just like in a regular multiplication table. It's just one times itself is itself. And the same thing will be true as we go down the column. So one times two, one times three, and then one times four. Now, now when we start multiplying, though, when we get to this next one, it's two times two, but that's four. And four in base four is one zero. Now, what about three, three times two is six. So how do I represent that in base four? It's one, four and two left over. So this is gonna be 12, one, two. What about two times four? Well, two times four is eight. And this is gonna be two copies of four, which is 20. Now, we've already done 2 times 3, which is 1, 2. So we'll take that from 3 times 2, because 2 times 3 and 3 times 2 are the same thing. What is 3 times 3 in base 4? Well, 3 times 3 in base 10 is 9. How do I represent 9 in base 4? Well, that's two copies of eight and one left over. So this is gonna be 21. And what about three times 10 or three times four? That's 12, that's three copies of four. That's 30. Four times two, we know that's um, eight. So that's gonna be our 20. And three times four, that's three times 10. So that's 30. And then four times four is 16, but that's where we've now jumped the, the digit 
Uh, we have no loose copies of ones, no loose copies of four. We have one copy of 16 because that's the next digit in our base. All right, so let's again, let's try this again, but for um, addition in base 12. Now for base 12, we're gonna need a table with 13 columns and 13 rows in order to account for everything. Um, and I can only go to 10. So I'm gonna add a couple more. So 10, 11, 12. 13, I think that'll account for everything. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, when I get to 10, I can't actually write 10. I have to use some other symbol because I can't have a two digit number in base 12 that represents something less than 12. So typically uh, we use uh, lowercase t and lowercase e for 10 and 11. And then when we get to 12, then we do 10, one zero in base 12 is one copy of 12. And then we go down the column basically the same way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, we'll fix that in a second. Eleven, and then ten, base twelve. So again, now. Again, we have to make sure we're not multiplying, we're adding. So when we add, one and one is two, one and two is three, one and three is four, and so forth. T, E, And then we get to one zero, because now we're at 12, right? So that's represented as one zero in base 12. And then one more than that would be 11 in base 12. And then the next line down, two and one is three. Again, all of this seems perfectly normal. In the addition table, everything just goes up by one in each row and so we get 10 base 12 and then we get 10 base uh, we get 11 base 12 and then we get 12 base 12 but remember 12 base 12 is a 12 plus a 2 in base 10 which is 14 so 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 you know, we can't do 10 and 11, T, E, 10 base 12, 11 base 12, 12 base 12, and 13 base 12. And so essentially what we're doing is we're essentially copying out the previous row and shifting it down one and then adding one to the end. Because it's just addition. And the addition tables are a lot easier to figure out than some of the other multiplication tables.
Now things are about to get a little tricky. So we don't go up to 20, it's one T because it's 10 copies, 10 leftovers, right? And then same thing for this one, this would be the next one would be one E base 12. And then the next one now, when we get to E, we can go up to the next digit, 20, base 12, because now this is 12 and 12, which in base 10 is 24, which is two copies of 12. And then we're going to basically, again, do more or less the same thing. We're going to create another table for multiplication, and this is the one that a little trickier. So create the biggest table we can. So that's 10, 11, 12, 13 columns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm one short. T. E and then 10 base 12. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine T E and ten base twelve. Take out a line, see if I can get all on one page. There we go. All right. Now, again, the, the one times one, everything's going to be exactly the same because that's just one times itself is itself. And same thing for the first column here. One times itself is itself. All right, so now we have, again, some of this is going to be completely straightforward. We're not going to run into any like obvious problems uh, with base 12 until we get to things that are bigger than 12. Uh, or, again, we'll have to represent things like 10 in terms of E into T and E or something like that. But the smaller numbers, they're just normal. 2 times 2 is 4. And uh, 2 times... Uh, three is um, six, and that's still less than 12. And so we don't have to overthink this too much to get started. Again, just to make the table a little easier to read. So this is six. And three times two is six. I guess two times three is six. And two times four is eight. And this is also eight. And two times five is 10, but I can't represent that as one zero. I represent it as a T. And now two times six is 12. And I represent that as one copy of 12. And then two times seven is 14, but 14 in base 10 in base converted to base 12 
is 12, base 12. So notice what I'm doing is I'm essentially adding two each time. So this is going to be 14. And then this is going to be 616. And then this is going to be 18. And then this is going to be 1t because 2 more than 8 is 10. And then when I get to the end here, this will be 20. And then my row for 2 multiplying by 2 and my column for multiplying by 2 are all the same. Okay, so then let's think about three. Three times three, that's nine. That's still less than 12, so I don't have to overthink that. Three times four, though, is 12 in base 10, which is one zero in base 12. And then three times five is 15 in base 10, but that's a 12 and a three. So this is one three base 12. So I'm gonna add three, one six base 12. And again, that's 18, that's an 18, that's a 12 and a six. So then I'm gonna add three more. 21 is a 12 and a nine. And then if I add three more, 24 is two copies of 12. Add three more, I get 23. Add three more, I get 26. Add three more, I get two nine. And then three times one zero in base 12 is 30. base 12. And then again, I copy all of these into the column in the corresponding spots because just like in base 10, these are real numbers. And so the order of multiplication doesn't matter. All right, so now I'm at four, five, four. Well, four times four is 16 in base 10, but that is 112 and four left over. So this will be 14 base 12. What about four times five? That's 20 in base 10. That's represented as a 12 and an eight left over. So one eight base 12, but what's the next one? Four times six is 24. So that's 20 base 12, because it's two copies of 12. And so I see this pattern, I'm gonna get 24 and then 28 and then 30 because four times nine is 36, which is three copies of 12. And then it will be 34. And then this will be 38. And then this will be 40. And then again, everything in the row goes into the column.
five times five, that's 25 in base 10, which is two copies of 12, which is 24 plus one left over. So this is 21. And if I add five more, I get 26. And if I add five more to six, I get 11. So let's think about that. 35 is one short of three copies of, of 12. So that's two copies of 12 and an 11 left over. And five times eight is 40. That's gonna be uh, three copies of 12 plus four. And then if I add five, I get 39. Um, Five times 10 is 50. That's four copies of 12 plus two. And then I add five. And I get 47. And then seven and five is 12. So I end up with five copies of 12 instead of four. All right, now 36, six times six, that's three copies of 12. And if I add six, I get 36. And if I add six more, six and six is 12, that gets me another whole copy of 12. 46. And then 50. And then 56, and then 60. So notice how this, the sixes behave relative to base 12. They behave kind of like five does for base 10, because it's exactly halfway. So all the numbers alternate six, zero, six, zero, six, zero. Seven times seven is 49. That's 48 plus one. So that's gonna be 41. And then if I add seven, I'm gonna get 48. Um, now seven times nine is 63. That is, five copies of 12, because that's 60 plus three left over. And then if I add seven, three and seven is 10. So I'm gonna get five T. And 11 times seven is 77. That is six copies of 12, which is 72 plus five more, and then five and seven is gonna get me another copy of 12. Eight times eight is 64. That's gonna give me six, five copies of 12 plus four more. And then I'm gonna add eight. So that's gonna give me four and eight is one more copy of 12. And then I'm gonna get eight more. 
and 11 times eight is 84 in base 10, but, uh, sorry, is 88 in base 10, but 84 is seven times 12. So this will be seven with four left over. And then that gets me to eight copies of 12. Nine times nine is 81. Uh, 72 is the six times 12. And that gives me nine left over. So this is going to be 69. And then if I add nine more, well, 90 is going to be 84, which is seven copies of 12, plus six left over. And then nine times 11, well, that's gonna give me another copy of 12 with only three left over. And then 90, nine copies of 12. Ten times ten is a hundred in base ten, but how many times does that divide by twelve? Well, it divides eight times by twelve because nine times twelve or eight times twelve is ninety six, so that leaves four left over. And then if I add ten more, 110 divided by 12 is 9. And then I believe there's 2 left over because 9 times uh, 12 is 108. And then I get T0 because it's 10 times 12. Now, E times E is 11 times 11 in base 10, which is 121, which clearly divides by 12 10 times with one left over. So T1, 12. And then this will be E0, base 12. And so will this one. And then 10 times 10 in base 12 um, is 12 squared. So it's 100 in base 12. Now, again, what is the point of filling out this multiplication or addition table? It's so that I don't have to think through every operation when I do addition. So, or multiplication. So now I can do various problems. If I want to find out what, um, let's say, um, thirty-four base twelve times uh, twenty-eight base twelve is. Um, remember that in multiplication. I'm essentially going to multiply unit by unit. So think about what's happening here. Um, let's write this in uh, vertical form. So 34, I'm gonna drop the subscripts um, because they're, it's hard enough to write like this as it is. Uh, but keep in mind, we're in base 12. So what am I doing? I'm multiplying 8 by 4, and then I'm multiplying 8 by 3. 
So let's think about our table. What is eight by four? It is 28. So I'm gonna write down the eight. And then I'm gonna carry the two and I'm gonna do eight by three. Eight by three is 20. Add the two is gonna be 22. And then I'm gonna do two by four, which is eight because that's nice and small. And then two by three is six. And then I'm gonna add, remember I'm in base 12. So I'm gonna get eight and zero, two and eight, that's 10. And then six and two is eight. So again, I can use my multiplication table in these intervening multiplication steps. And that's why we do this. Um, this is how students learn to do multiplication in base 10. And then they just have to memorize the tables because they do it all the time. But obviously for us working in other bases, unless we are literally doing arithmetic in every base that exists, uh, we would not memorize these. We would want to make our tables and then we could refer to the tables to help us do our addition and multiplication uh, without having to, again, do these sort of mental conversions where we're constantly trying to convert between base 10 and base 12. We can just work directly in base 12 because we have the information in the table.